Hello, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we will continue with oil characterization. In the first tutorial video, we introduced or were introduced to the oil characterization, right? And in this video, you will learn how to um, use the Aspenisys oil manager. Right, so this video will show you how to uh, specify assay data in the oil manager or using the oil manager in the simulation basis manager. Right, so we are in the simulation basis environment, right, and we introduced the oil characterization in the last class. Now it's time to extensively talk about the oil manager, the oil manager feature in aspen isis right so this is the data we'll be using to illustrate how the oil manager is used right this is the data we'll be making use of for this particular tutorial so let's just get on with it as soon as possible now i told you in the last um uh tutorial video right that for you to um, characterize oil in the software, you need to specify your light components, that's your light ends, then your assay data, which is the distillation data, and then the properties, right? The properties of that particular crude oil sample. Right? So those are the three things you need to do, or the three basic things you need to do when you are trying to do analysis of a particular crude oil sample using the software right so you specify your light ends you specify the properties of the crude oil sample the available properties of the crude oil sample and then you specify the assay data right so that is what we'll be doing but we'll be using the oil manager in this particular tutorial right so you have the oil manager in the simulation basis manager right in the oil section you have a section called oil and in that section you have the oil manager right so now from our from our um, simulation problem says with the aid of the oil characterization option in ISIS model a crude oil stream with the following data right so we have the crude oil feedstock the crude oil is a feedstock to the to a refining process it gave us the fluid package to use then we have the standard density which is a property of this particular crude oil sample then we have the light ends then their composition then we have the distillation data we have the distillation data right here yes so this is the distillation data for this particular uh, simulation problem right and in this um, our illustration will be making use of the true boiling point the true boiling point right so now when you want to use the oil manager the first thing you do is to add your light components to the component list right so we'll be adding the light components just the light components right all these from methane to end pentane We have methane to end pentane so you hold down shift and it highlights all of them okay to end pentane right and then you click on add so we have added our components then we have the fluid package to be Ben Robinson so we select Ben Robinson right we select peg robinson now we can select the or click on the oil manager so you just click on it and then it comes into your navigation pane by the left right so once you click on it at the top here it comes up at the navigation pane of your simulation basis manager now this is where the specification begins Right, so to um, specify the properties and the assay data you have, 
you need to click on input assay right you click on input assay in order to specify the properties the available properties and then the assay data the distillation data you have right so you click on input assay then you click on add right so it brings you to this environment right so now we are going to be specifying properties right so in this bulk properties section you select used right so selecting used gives you the opportunity to specify the properties that you have for that particular sample then also we are going to be specifying the distillation data which is the assay data so you click on you click on the method that was used to generate that particular data right so in the last class we talked about some of these um distillation methods right some of these um sorry some of these characterization methods right let me be more specific some of these characterization methods right so you choose the one that was used to generate the data right so in this case i will choose the true boiling point the true boiling point so depending on the method that was used that is what would determine which you would choose here right so if you use the astm d86 method that is what you are supposed to click on in this particular section right so now so we have specify the assay data type right now we also will uh, make a specification for the light ends right light ends we are going to click on input composition and we are doing that because we have the composition of the light ends right so if you don't have the composition you can click on auto calculate and ISIS automatically generates um, a composition for your light ends right but in this case we have data for it so we are going to use input composition right so input composition for light ends then we also have molecular weight curve density curve and viscosity curve now if you have um, data that relates to the molecular weight of the sample or the density or the viscosity and you want to generate plots based on those properties then you can specify them as well so you can specify them but in this case it's just a simple um, distillation data and we don't have such we don't have anything relating to molecular weight density or viscosity so we are going to be leaving those ones right we will not be specifying them in this tutorial now you have the distillation conditions right so if your characterization is for atmospheric conditions you click on it the radio button if it's for vacuum condition you also click on it so whichever one it is you would have to highlight by selecting them or clicking on the radio button right so now we are we are modeling for atmospheric conditions so we are going to leave it on the we are going to activate the atmospheric now we can now specify the values we have so we can start with the properties right so you just click on the radio button once you have selected the particular um sections you want to define right from here you can now start specifying them on the right so first you can specify the properties so from our question we only have standard density right we only have standard density which is 29 api 60 right so as much as you have you are expected to specify so if you have the molecular weight of the sample you specify it if you have the what's in uopk you have to specify so depending on how much data you have right so in this case we are specifying just the standard density of the sample which is 29 api 60 so you just click on it and then you ensure that you selected the right um, units right so 
it converts it back to the default unit which is kg per meter cube uh, so we have specified the bulk properties then you have your light ends so your light ends have already been added to this section all you need to do is specify the composition right so from here your light ends are in they are in um liquid volume percent so you have to take note of the units as well so you have to be sure that the units align then you can specify the numbers right so we have 0 0.0065 0 0.0065 enter so when you are done entering your um, values for your uh, light ends the composition of the light ends you can move over to specify the assay the assay data type which is distillation data so you click on edit assay Right, you click on edit assay once you click on edit assay you have the opportunity to input the assay data also in this case you still have to check the assay basis right so you have to ensure that the assay basis properly aligns with your data so we are still making use of liquid volume for the distillation data now you now click on edit assay and then you input the values right so from here we have values for yes this is it so this is our assay data here assay percent against temperature right so this is the value or these are the values we will be inputting so we have for the first one we have zero that's zero percent then we have minus 12 degrees celsius then we have four let me see we have for 32 32 degrees celsius 32 degrees celsius then we have nine seventy four degrees celsius So these are all the values for our distillation data right so they have been entered into the input data for assay the assay data table then you click ok once you are done inputting the values you click ok and it says that table is ready table is ready so we have specified all aspects of our crude sample right our crude sample data we have specified the light end component the light end composition we have specified the properties and we have specified the distillation data so the next thing to do is to um calculate assay right it says assay was not calculated so you only calculate assay after you have finished um making your specifications after you have inputted all the values you have right that is when you calculate assay so what you need to do is to click on calculate and that's it so you click on calculate and you get the green bar that says assay was calculated so that this is the first part of the specification then now you can go to your output blend after input assay you have output blend right in the output blend you click on add right you click on add then you still click on add again right so this add helps you to create a stream for your simulation in the simulation environment now after clicking on add the second time you click on install oil right and then you type the stream name whatever name you want for example you can say crude oil right you can say crude oil once you click on it and you type the name you click on install right so once you click on install a stream is created in the simulation environment right and that stream can be used as a crude oil feed stream 
for any simulation any crude oil simulation you want to do right so that's it now back to the assay that we just did um so once you uh, calculate your assay right uh isis does its estimations and then it also generates plots as well right it generates plots so we can check that from the output blend right so you have your distribution plot this is your distribution plot based on the calculations ISIS have done on this particular sample then you have your you have your property plot right if you click on this tbp because that was what we used in the specification of our distillation data so if you click on it for example you get this plot which is the distillation curve which is temperature against liquid volume percent right so you can get your distillation curve from here then you also have your tables section right where you can get different kind of tables for different calculations that have been estimated by ISIS, right so you can get a lot of information from here you can get your oil distribution table here then you have your oil properties right you have your oil properties also um in this uh characterization that is done in the oil manager right isis creates uh hypo components for your crude oil sample it automatically creates hypo components for it let me see component properties yes so these are the hypo components that were generated for this particular crude oil sample right and then their properties as well right so because uh, uh crude oil always contains a lot of components that cannot be properly classified right so that is the reason why uh, hypo components are created for your sample right so because you cannot classify properly classify them in any particular group right but they do exist they do exist right so that is why isis has to create hypo components for it and these hypo components are added to your component list automatically right so you have them added in your component lists they have already been estimated so you don't need to do any estimation for them uh, they are just added after your assay has been calculated they are added to the component list that you added your light ends right so back to the output blend like i said earlier you can check a lot of generated data and also different kind of plots right different plots that exist right so now we can go back to the we can go back to our um we can go to our simulation environment to look at what i was saying about the output blend you know in the output blend we installed a stream named crude oil right so you can go and check it out in the simulation environment right so in the simulation environment you have this right here this is a stream that was created via the oil manager right now in this stream the composition has automatically been specified right automatically composition has been specified by the software because the stream was created using the oil manager so the oil manager has specified the composition of the um the components in the stream right so if you want to work with this particular stream all you need to specify are the process conditions right the least required process conditions which can be temperature pressure and any of the flow rates right or a mixture of um, temperature pressure with vapor fraction and then any of the flow rates any of the combinations that work in order to fully specify a stream right so for example you can just specify temperature pressure and molar flow and then you will see that the stream is going to solve 
right so this is just an example right so you see that the stream will solve once you specify just those three conditions right so it says unknown flow rate okay our um our server is on hold so you click on active and then the stream is fully specified so like i said earlier the composition has already been specified by the oil manager so you don't need to specify composition for this particular stream so if you wanted to simulate a process that involves crude oil you could start off with this particular material stream right and then attach any other material stream that is supposed to be in your process and then the units and then you can continue your simulation right so if you wanted to or if you want to um simulate a process that involves crude oil you have to go through this method to create your first material stream or your feed material stream that con contains crude oil right so this is one of the methods you can use to actually um, create a crude oil feed stream right the other way would be to use the petroleum assay right the petroleum assay can also be used to do something similar to this right that will be treated in a subsequent tutorial right in a subsequent tutorial the petroleum assay feature will be discussed extensively this is where this particular tutorial will end right so we'll continue in the next tutorial and it will still be oil characterization but in this case we'll be using the um, petroleum assay feature right thank you for joining me in this particular lecture if you haven't subscribed kindly do so to get notifications of future tutorials on process simulation like this video and share with your friends right do have a good day